We're back here on our ESPN Esports Valorant launch special. This is going to be the easiest conversation of my entire career. As you can see, the four people that are currently on your screen, this hour is going to fly by. We're going to dive into all things casting as it pertains to Valorant. It's our caster's corner. We got Pansy. We got Puckett. We got Golden Boy. And listen, I know I like to call myself the host that does the most, but man, with the three of you here, this is going to be, this is some esports heavyweight firepower that we're bringing to this stream. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, man. No worries. It's a pleasure to be talking about a game that's been so fun. It's just, I think, taking the whole world by storm. And I think as a commentator, it's been one that no one can avoid. Everyone's had a lot of interest in this title. You all have had your unique paths uh, to get to. you've all casted Valorant tournaments uh, and you've all had unique paths to get there. Uh, Pansy, let's start with you. Obviously, uh, perhaps the most pertinent experience, having a lot of CSGO in your background, transitioning to PUBG, now doing some Valorant tournaments. Uh, how has casting the Valorant tournaments felt? Like, what was the first tournament like as a caster? Uh, the first one was the T1 Invitational that I got to work with Pocket on. And um, I, oh, sorry about commentating, that. I did, honestly, it was good. No, I, I kid you not. It was it was actually a really <laughs> nice experience. Um, I can't be mean he's on the show with me. But no, I, like legitimately, it was nice to have um, experienced hands on a brand new show and a brand new product like that because it can go wrong. And that's where you generally like having kind of more established commentators but as a game coming from counter-strike uh it was a very easy transition for me personally i didn't find it too hard i felt the game format was comfortable to follow it was nothing new in that aspect yes there's some differences here and there but the game played out as i expected um beyond that i i think every experience going forward has been a good learning curve and just kind of working with different commentators from various different games has been the most fun aspect for me, technically, I guess, you know, learning their different styles and applying it to a game that I guess traditionally has been played out for a while. It's search and destroy with a new look, right? Yeah, basically. I mean, you 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 brought a lot. I'm in that T1 Invitational tournament. You brought so much knowledge and information to it. Like it was really, really well presented. And for someone like you, Golden Boy, I mean, what I love about your casting is just the way that you narrate a story, right? Like you're able to weave people's backgrounds and just like creating those moments. And I feel like Valorant lends itself really well to that. Like yeah. the pace of the game uh, really n lends itself well to setting up and creating those important moments. Yeah, for sure. Look, I'm getting old, right? <laughs> and uh, and and I just need to slow it down. You know what I mean? And Valorant helps me out with that greatly. But also, jokes aside, uh, I do think that the um, just the general idea of like what this game brings to the table uh, is actually going to be pretty profound I, for not just uh, like esports, but also for gaming a as a whole. Because you have to keep in mind that for the longest time, we were constantly told by a lot of the people within the games media and, and all that stuff that, you know, the hardcore type of shooters, like people don't really want that anymore. They want something that's going to be a little bit more casual. Uh, hence why you see so many games that would release and then try and, uh, I guess, conform to like games like Call of Duty, which are inherently just a little bit easier uh, to play, right? Easier to get into. Uh, obviously at a pro level, completely different story, as we all know. Uh, but when you talk about it from a casual point of view, it obviously is a, is a game that has a lower entry point than, say, a game like Valorant. So it's actually quite refreshing to see a game that challenges that notion come out and then also uh, kind of sits alongside a game like Counter-Strike that has been, you know, so uh, just so profound in our space. Uh, but also now it's going to allow a new generation of individuals, maybe those people who were fans of Overwatch, come in play this game, Call of Duty, come in, play this game, Halo, you know, so on and so forth, Apex, PUBG, et cetera, et cetera. So they're all being a part of this story and it allows us to be able to tell a, a great narrative there <clears throat> as well because we have that we have that option now. We have so many different weaving, connecting storylines coming from all these different games. It's actually an exciting time to be a commentator in my opinion. That's an interesting point, Pucket. I mean, we we focus on Counter-Strike a lot just because of the similarities of these games and whether we say, oh, pro players from Counter-Strike should do very well here. And, and Pansy saying, you know, the transition as a caster from CSGO to Valorant is very seamless as well. What about other titles? Like, how do you think Overwatch casters would do in Valorant? How do you think uh, Fortnite and PUBG casters will do in Valorant? 
I think anyone that is a tier one caster right now can transition to this title. It's going to take a little bit of a learning curve to actually master the gameplay yourself, but to commentate it, I think it's it's pretty basic. Everyone is familiar with Search and Destroy at this point. doesn't matter if you commentate Fortnite or if you've been working on Rocket League. There's probably a game of Search in your history, whether it was Call of Duty or Planet and Counter-Strike. Um, I think one of the cooler parts of this as well is you can be coming in fresh but still be able to get all kinds of information on these players because they all have such long histories, especially on the Counter-Strike side. You can see a lot of the guys come near their late 20s, early 30s are still competing. Some of the new Fortnite players that are making the transition, just familiar with the mouse and keyboard at this point of time. So I feel like you can you can always get information on the on the top-level players, but when it comes to commentating it, it's it's something that's pretty simple. The drama plays out in front of you. There's suspense every single round. It's pretty easy to get excited by a big play in this game. I think one of the tougher parts is when everyone is just doing uh, their role and, and getting a team ace. Those are some of the, the lower exciting rounds where you have to maybe dig into the storylines a little bit more. Um, there's not one star to focus on. But as far as new people coming in, if you are brand new to this game, don't be afraid of it. You're going to understand it after a while. It'll take you years to master, but you can learn with the rest of us because it hasn't even dropped until tomorrow. So yeah. when this got announced, right, like the big joke on social media, at least among casters was, yep, I'm a, I'm a Valorant caster now. I'm a Valorant caster. I'm going to get these jobs. I'm a Valorant caster. Look at me, right? Like that was the big joke among no matter what level you heard, you saw it everywhere. And I guess I'm wondering, like, take me into your shoes, right? You guys are uh, predominantly, at least either you're freelancers now or you're, you have been that in your careers. And now this massive, potentially AAA, top, tippy-top eSport that's going to contend with CSGO and League of Legends has Riot behind it, could have the potential to be a top eSport for years to come. How do you view that in your career plans? What do you do? How does it factor in? What kind of decisions do you make? Uh, Alex, let's start with you. Well, you know, that I could easily just say it's because I'm super famous and I'm best friends with The Rock uh, is the reason why, you know, I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The Rock is good at Valorant? Are you, is that uh, what you're confirming me here? You know, he's just a jet main. It's unfortunate. Oh, he's, just a, he's just a silver jet main. Wow. I don't want to expose Dwayne Johnson like that. Plays with I'm the people's alt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I... <laughs> yeah, really, it really is. Okay, uh... So, uh, you know, I, I saw that uh, pop out quite a bit uh, on social media. And I think that there's uh, multiple reasons for that. Um, I think, number one, it's always easier to just dive headfirst into a new game, especially one that, as you had mentioned, right, has the backing of a studio like Riot, who, I mean, let's be real here, is like when you, you talk about esports, you, you cannot have a conversation about esports without talking about League of Legends, because that is the... I would say it's like one of the standard bears, right? It holds right up there with Counter-Strike. It's like what we should expect esports to be at a global scale. Um, so I think because of that, you had a lot of people very much so just getting into it because they know that they want to have that opportunity to be able to say like, yeah, I, I was at the front lines commentating Valorant tournaments when the game first came out. You, you look back to folks like ZP, for example, in Overwatch, and he's like a great example of a, of a caster that, started from the ground up with the community, right? Grinded, grinded, grinded. And now finally, you know, deservedly so is in the Overwatch League uh, because he's that damn good. Finally. And, and Exactly. And it should have been there from the from the start, in my opinion, but that's a whole different conversation. That said, though, uh, I do believe that folks like that are going to be very necessary uh, for Valorant. But for myself personally, one of the things that attracted me to this game, and Puckett can actually attest to this, is because we used to play a, a little game called Shadowrun back in the day. And Shadowrun was one of my favorite, if not my favorite first person shooter of all time. It was on the Xbox 360, look it up, it's a great game. Uh, <laughs> and it was basically like Counter-Strike with magic and, and elves and stuff. It was sick, loved it to death. Uh, and this game actually reminded me a lot of that, like in the beginning, uh, obviously knowing that it wasn't exactly like it, but it just fed into that charm that I had with Counter-Strike, or with, uh, with excuse me, with Shadowrun, I didn't grow up playing Counter-Strike because I didn't grow up with a uh, PC in my household until I was like, you know, like 20 something and I bought one myself. So for that reason, I was just like, hey, this game looks awesome. I want to be a part of it. I, I, no matter how, I just want to be a part of it. Even if it's just being a streamer, I just want to be a part of it. So that's kind of like where I sat personally. I don't like to support anything that I don't personally enjoy or believe in. So 
that's why you know i i sought to seek out opportunities in valorant once i realized i did in fact love the game that i was going to be in there like swimwear you know like a speedo is it like pansy what was your reaction when you when you saw this i mean it, were you extremely happy that all the stars seem to align like this is a CSGO type game with Riot backing and you know there's longevity here was it was it like a aha eureka kind of moment uh yes and no I mean as a commentator it's a, from two different perspectives you know as a player yes because I need a new FPS game PUBG's been on the wind down it's still there but you know I need something new to play and it, it fulfilled that role so for me as a player very exciting I enjoyed it from the kind of closed stages of it as a commentator, as soon as you see a game that's got a AAA developing studio behind it uh, that has huge competitive potential, you know it's going to be cast a battle royale, right? Like it's everyone in there. <laughs> Everyone's, you know, looking to get in at either the grassroot level or come in as kind of, I, I, and, and take no offense to this, I think all three of us, I look at us as kind of the sell swords of play by play, right? Like a new game comes <laughs> out and they need someone who's solid, who can just do a good job. Get at me the in start. there, baby. Throw there. them in, right? Like that's the thing. You 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 pay for good quality commentators who, let's say, you are in an early access point of your game that can carry a show when things go wrong, right? Like that's the point. That's why people put CS:GO casters on a pretty high standard. They can fill for hours. They make it look good. So again, as a commentator, I looked at it like, well, we, you know, you're going to be thrown in with the big dogs here. Are you going to be the the type of commentator who comes in for the opening couple of months and then fades away? and goes on to the next project, or do you want to commit to this fully? Now, for me, I try and stick to two projects a year, traditionally. Um, I may dabble in more, but whether it be CSGO, whether it be you know PUBG in there, and with PUBG sliding away and me backing away personally from Counter-Strike, I was looking for that next game anyway. And the player side of me enjoying this game kind of instantly put me through to this point, right? So it's like, um, yeah, for me, it was an instantaneous kind of grab it and play it, see if you actually love it. Because when you cast a game, if you don't love it, you're, people will find that out eventually. You can you can bluff your way and kind of bullshit your way through the first couple of months before people really understand what's going on. And then you'll start seeing the other commentators come up and have, you know, the community support and everyone going, well, these guys seem to know a great deal more and they've, you know, worked with the community. Why aren't they getting the work? So, as said, I think we'll see who sticks it out long term. I think I'm going to try to. I, I'd love to be able to do that myself. That's my goal for now. But as I said, it, there will come a time, there'll be a point where the purely Valorant casters will come up and I'll be interested to see who makes it out of that pack. I think that's the one I'm looking at is who's going to be the analysis for this? Who's going to come in and, you know, compliment a play-by-play -play caster? That's that's what's kind of my curious factor because, as I said, you know, Overwatch, I think they started off by getting all the big names in and then slowly but surely people went, do these represent what we like to hear, what we think? I don't know. There was some talent for sure, but maybe not one-to-one -one with the community. So I feel like, you know, it has to be a balance. You have to be very aware of that. And I, I'm looking forward to see the community side come through. But that takes time. That takes, a, hopefully, a demo function in the game where these commentators can sit there, cast over a VOD, put it on their YouTube channel, build up a community. These features help the community grow. So I'm, I'm hoping to see a bit more of that. But yeah, for me, it's, it's probably going to take up the rest of this year, hopefully. Hmm. Pocket, do you think, where, where do you think the best or the most longest standing Valorant casters will come from? Do you, do you think it's gonna be long standing esports casters <clears throat> that will make the transition? Do you think it's gonna be uh, new blood that's gonna, you know, that loves this game and it's gonna, they're gonna see it as their first opportunity, their first shot to try and, and, and make a name for themselves and grind the community tournaments? Where do, where do you think the caster lineup will shake down when Riot introduces their official format? I think. I won't be surprised to see a lot of names that are currently working within Riot working on the projects that Riot has deemed to be the the top tier level. Um, what's really interesting, though, is in all the interviews, is you hear the reinforcement of we want this to be community ran. We want this to be kind of homegrown in a lot of ways in the early years. So I think you're going to see the Wild Wild West. It's going to be everyone working on as many shows as possible. And whoever's getting the most consistent work is going to get a lot of love from the community early on. And they're going to be kind of a step ahead of everyone. Um, but two or three years down the line, I think the people you're looking at ca casting this game are the ones that are willing to relocate and to work out of the same studio as their co-casters day in and day out. And that's probably going to require a relocation to L.A., I would assume, at Riot's headquarters. Um, there's, of course, the EU studios that could exist and the Asian studios. Uh, but at least for someone like myself, I'm understanding that 
I can get in on a lot of these tournaments right now for Valorant, and I hope to stay very active with this. But if I want to be doing it three to five years from now, I'm probably going to have to relocate to do it. So mm -hmm. I think the best people are probably ones that already have broadcast experience, people that pick up games quickly. Um, but the 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 most loved members of the commentary crew are going to be the experts, the people that actually play the game day in and day out, that understand the little nuances that can actually teach the audiences and, and teach their play-by-play -play counterparts. What I'm really trying to ask here is how are we all going to grab that main host position away from shocks? Oh, it's already <laughs> been done. Screwed. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're all uh, screwed. No, We're no. dead. You know, though, I do think it's fantastic <laughs> that we have so many people that are getting involved and uh, want to want to be involved. Like for me personally, right? Like I'm using Valorant as an opportunity to actually uh, get better when it comes to my game knowledge, right? I I, I cast a bunch of different games, right? Uh, the common critique and criticism, because it's like always the easiest one, is like Golden Boy knows nothing about video games, which you know what? I may not know nothing about a lot you of You get that criticism? Seriously? Oh, all the time, all the time. It's it, that and like a bunch of other layers of other things. But, you know, we'll just push that aside for right now. The focus is like that aspect of you don't know anything. So I'm now like just investing my time climbing to uh, Immortal in a game and in a genre that I've never actually uh like played seriously before right like i again i did not grow up playing counter-strike so i did not know how any of this worked like all my friends and like i would play with rivington and he would like know all these things inherently in the beginning i'm just like i don't okay this doesn't make any sense to me because like i i'm playing it with like a call of duty player's mind where you know i'm focused on like head glitching or jumping around corners and stuff like that and this is just not a that's not a thing that you'd want to do unless you have like a you know a bucky shout out to the bucky people out there <laughs> bucky all day uh, anyway, but I, I just want to improve upon that, right? So I, I'm excited to just dive into the mind of a pro player and learn a little bit more about how they perceive the game. And I watch a lot of the pro player VODs and I play the game and I aspire to play the game at a high level, get to Immortal. I don't ever think I'll get to the, whatever the rank is now ahead of Immortal, uh, unreleased Valor. name. Well, no, it's not no, Valorant they're changing anymore. It they're, changing yeah, they're changing it. The they're changing it, Bucket. It's, you can't be Valorant and Valorant anymore, Christopher. Okay? No. Anyway. Yeah. My dream is crushed. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's basically, you know, like how I'm approaching it. And I want to work on my game knowledge. So, I think that if a uh, caster just comes into it with, like, a bunch of different ideas on how they want to, like, help improve and grow the scene like i i think it's just a a plus across the board and that goes for veteran casters don't just rely on your name you know like actually put in some work and and i think that this community will uh will reciprocate that back to you tenfold just to, i just, just want to quickly ahead, add on that sorry. real real quick just i i think this is also such a a, a a poor hot take from the community sometimes where it's like play by play casters they don't know the game i think that traditionally in my role specifically if i'm commentating with someone like moses for example in counter-strike or you know an ex-pro player or someone who has not necessarily just the same knowledge but greater knowledge than me but they have the ability to back it up by the fact that they've been there firsthand and they've played at this level i want to set them up for success i don't right. want to sit there and say it with you know i could say the same thing technically but do i have the same credentials as someone who's played you know at the highest ends no so again, for me, I, I think people need to realize as well, there is a difference between play-by-play -play and analysis. And yes, play-by-play -play does need to up their quality. Don't be lazy. Don't just say your same phrase over and over again. Don't just pretend to be a rap god caster because you can't control your pace. Don't do these lazy things, right? Like we, we all want Reddit clips. I get it. But like, let's push a little above that. For me, it's like, again, like there should be a definition between the two, but the audience needs to also understand that I'm there to set up my co-caster for these moments, you know, on those lower rounds where it's an eco buy or it's something that's not going to have too much hype traditionally. I want my co-caster to talk me through the deeper analytics of the last few rounds that he wouldn't normally have traditionally. So again, I think there is a balance and it should be there because you don't want two play-by-play -play casters just yelling at you, but also you don't just want two analytical, you know, sort of... Uh, I guess commentators just having a chat because it doesn't represent how exciting those games can be. So there is a def you know defined role, and I just again I think that the audience needs to realize there is a difference for a reason, but also that's no excuse for play-by-play -play casters to be lazy. And there's also a reason why color commentators, analysts are former players. 
It, to Pansy's mm -hmm. point, right? The play-by-play -play position is very much a mechanical position, right? Whether it's sports, whether it's esports, any type of competition where there's a two-man or even a two-person or three-person booth, that play-by-play -play position is the traffic cop, right? That's yeah. the person yeah. that is setting the flow. That is the person that is of oftentimes describing the action that you are seeing so that the color commentator, the reason why color is in that title is because they are adding value to what you are seeing, drawing in with the color what you may not see at first. Yeah, it's basically so that's a, very a children's good point. coloring book. It's a children's it, coloring exactly book. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what are the points I wanted to make, though, also, is this is a brand new game, and I hope that it is allowed by the community and that casters are not afraid to take a new approach on it. Um, learn from other titles where hype has become such a major impact on just the environment for the audience. Like, if there's a big explosive moment that couldn't have happened in a previous tax shooter, but now can because of abilities, get hype behind it. And I feel like a lot of people may be turned off on the idea of two play by play casters, but I think if any play by play caster puts enough time into playing the game themselves, also researching, or just like I did when I was on the Overwatch League, I was watching four matches a day for four days a week for two years in a row, you get to understand the game at a deeper level. And I wouldn't be afraid to yeah. see that in the future. Don't shy away from it. Bring that enthusiasm, bring that hype. I think you just need to find a duo that complements each other. And possibly we're going to see trios as we have an even deeper analyst or expert who might be able to chime in knowing that these games are all 45 minutes each. Yeah, it's true. It even goes for the host role, host role as well, right? Uh, this is something that me and Puckett have definitely, uh, I know we've taken like flack on a ton. They, they always think like the host is an, is an analyst, but like, that's not our, mm -hmm. that's not our thing. Like, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're driving conversation. So like, if I sound like I am being, you know, clueless, according to, you know, Reddit, well, uh, if I, if I sound like that, uh, it's not because I, I don't know anything. It's because I'm trying to set up the analysts to like educate our uninformed viewer as to what could have potentially happened, especially with a game like Overwatch, for example, that had just like a ton of things happening at once. Like this is a great hand representation of Overwatch, you know, just things just flying all over the place. So that is, it's very easy to get kind of caught up though. It's very easy to get caught up in like, what the hell's going on? Even in Valorant, as much as I love Valorant, you, if you look at an overhead view of Valorant and you see like, uh, a viper smoke go down right uh and then you see brim smokes or you see an ice wall and you see all that all the all these different matte colors just combining in one it honestly just looks like a really really bad painting and you just have to try and like educate the viewer as to like what specifically is going on here and there and you have to try and like separate that but as a host you have to spoon feed it to the analyst because you're you're going to get them to that place it's just a conversation that's it's really all it ever is it's just a conversation it's funny in esports more than anywhere else I've found that if you are doing that job, the host and play by play in particular, correct, you're going to get the most flame for it for the reasons that you just mentioned, Golden Boy, right? Yeah. Because like you yeah. are you are not supposed to be the expert in that position, but you're going to get flamed for not being an expert despite doing your role correct, which is it's fascinating. It's like almost like a catch 22. It also Don't even worry about Reddit, saying, man. Though. Yeah, no, no, but it also goes to what Pansy's yeah, saying too, though. Yeah, we say you that, but then we're on Reddit like seven times a day. Come on, let's be you. None of you are reading Reddit at all. I have uh, I am never on Reddit. OK, yeah, sure, I sure. don't own I don't have a Reddit <laughs> account. No, it's not even a thing. I was no. just going to say that Pansy was right when it comes to, to a lot of talent, myself included. Right. Like we have like things we say and, you know, it's time to, you know, it's time to just try and freshen it up, baby. You know, like you just got to add a little bit more pizzazz to whatever it is that you're saying. Look, pizzazz, new word I just threw in there. We weren't wow. even expecting that. My vocabulary Ooh. unmatched. Unbelievable. Thank you so much, Pansy. You, you added nice pizzazz to this stream. <laughs> Thank you, Golden Boy. Appreciate that. Uh, what will Valorant look like in a couple years for a caster? Is it going to be like League of Legends where there's going to be multiple casters around the world? Maybe it's yep. a full-time job. Do you think it's going to be a viable career option? What, what's Valorant going to look like for a caster? Pocket, it's, right, it's right owned and operated, right? They're not going to let anyone else run away with their gem. They've been working on it for years and years. They finally developed it to a point where they're willing to show the world. 
it's only a matter of time before they announce their league. And I think they're going to give it every resource imaginable. Esports is booming now more than ever. It, when the rest of the world is hit with the pandemic, this is one area of entertainment that continues to grow. And I think looking forward two years down the line, three years down the line, I definitely expect full-time commentary jobs. I think you'll see a team of about 10 probably in North America, similar numbers in Asia as well as Europe. And um, I, I hope that we're seeing a worldwide league of some sort with a lot of crossover, a lot of land crossovers, more than what we have currently. Yeah. That's encouraging, especially for people that want this to be their full-time job, right? Like that's, that's very encouraging for that to have that many positions because like truthfully, how many full-time jobs for casters are there in esports? Realistically. Minimal. Honestly, minimal, right? Minimal, minimal. Uh, you know, I mean, I've had the fortune of going like full freelance for the last like full year for three, three years now, I think. And there are very few that have actually been able to do that. But that's also because like, you know, I just took uh, a variety of different jobs. You know, I, I, I'm not you go and you put me in a situation where I got to commentate CS and then put Pansy there. Pansy is one of the best to ever do it. Mm -hmm. And she and, and, and she'll just run circles around me. I'll just sound like like an idiot. You know, most times I am, but like, I just have to be very cautious of the fact that I'm not good at that. So I'll do the stage hosting job, you know, because there are smarter minds like DDK or, or Pansy or, or James Bardolph, Anders, the list goes on and on. And Counter-Strike, I was asked a while ago to cast Counter-Strike and I was like, hell no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not doing that to myself. I ain't crazy. <laughs> you think I'm crazy, bro? You know, so that's, I, I, I just, there isn't a lot. There isn't a lot of options, right? So I think a lot of casters need to be mindful of that. And don't and I say this with truth. Don't quit your day job. I worked as a social worker for many years mm -hmm. before I got my first full opportunity uh, to work in esports. Took me a long time, and I was unpaid. It's different times now, but it's it still holds true. How much do you want Valorant to be part of your plate, either in the next year or even if those full time jobs were to present themselves? Let's go around the horn with that, Pansy. Um. I think time scale is going to be a big thing for me. So I still want this year to have, you know, PUBG focus on it for me. They've, I've locked in a good couple of events with them. I like to traditionally stick to, you know, I, I don't like to hop from a game straight away. If I've committed to it, I want to try and close it out, you know, quite well-rounded. So I think it'd be a 50, 50 split with me. I'd like to put a good chunk of time. Cause that's what I play in my own time right now is I, I play Valorant. Well, when I can, right. It's, it's that sort of thing. So Ideally, I'd like it to complement that, that I'll pick it up when I can. I'm not going to forego doing my, uh, I guess, due diligence towards um, PUBG. I, I've signed up for a long run with them, so I don't want to kind of bow out of that. But then going on from that next year, let's say it's fair game, right? I want to see how the, the space looks. Is it viable? Is it going to be enough for a year's worth of work? Is it paying good enough rates? Is the, you know, is it going in-house? Will that then stop me being able to do other work? You know, this, these are several factors to fully committing to a game. And, you know, it's when I was in discussions with PUBG, this is going back a couple of years. I said, look, are we going to have a year block out? Do we need to then say, okay, negotiations need to change in that regard? Because if I'm not taking any other work, because I'm purely working schedule wise on your product, I need to then kind of account for the potential loss from Counter-Strike or, you know, whichever other game I was doing at the time. So I think you need to see how the landscape evolves. We've seen an incredibly healthy start to the scene, if not almost too top heavy, right? It's been it's been rife with it, right? And there's also been grassroots, but it's it's been quick. We've barely got a spec client that works, but you know, it's it's been <laughs> there. Um, but yeah, for me, as I said, once the game gets going, I do want to try and stay in touch with it as much as I can. I think it's a game that I enjoy in my time personally. But I'm not going to get ahead of myself and, you know, back out of every other, you know, responsibility I have right now, because that's just, you know, I've been doing this too long. I've seen games come and go. I think this will be here, but I also have to account for the fact I've got to pay rent. I've got to, you know, I've got to make bills. I'm, I'm not, you know, 17 anymore or, you know, 16 anymore living at home where I don't have to be too worried about, you know, paying my bills. You know, it's 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 a career and we have to be smart about it. So. Yeah, I'll be I'll be invested as much as I can be. And if the scene keeps picking up, I'll shy further and further away from other games and focus more and more on Valorant. So that's kind of the balance that I'm looking at here. Alex? Oh. Uh hard for me to say. Um a little a little bit of what, what Pansy was saying, right? You don't just go, you know, face first in, in into the into the pool because you never know. It could be shallow water and then you and then you break your face. Can't say that happened to me before because I don't go into the water because I'm afraid of the ocean. So <laughs> that said, 
I feel like you just have to be smart about how you approach this. And that is exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I will continue to work across a variety of different games because I have relationships with a lot of studios and a lot of great companies. And I intend on maintaining that. Uh, I, I will work with uh, the, you know, like Riot or, or any other event organizer that comes out, uh, if they reach out, right, we'll make sure the schedule and, and you know, nothing really changes. And, and the benefit here is, you know, we all actually work with an incredible agency in CSA that ensures that, you know, we are planned out in our schedule and, and, and stuff. And uh, if there's an event coming along and I don't have like a, a, I don't know, like a Call of Duty Warzone charity event that's lined up, like, hey, you know, I'll do it. But if I got a charity event lined up, I'm doing that, right? right. Like, and that that will continue to to stand true, right? Uh, now, where it gets a little tricky is when, if let's say down the line, which I don't think they're gonna do it immediately, a riot is all like, we're doing a league in LA, and everyone's gonna come live out here, like Overwatch League did. And hey, I I told Overwatch League no. I was just like, I'm not going to LA. I just moved from San Francisco when I left Twitch to to New York. I just was not gonna go back. Uh, because I had just went, I just, just came home and it's the same thing here. I like my life in New York. It ain't going to change. So we'll see what happens, but that's a conversation for like, you know, two, three years from now, Alex, mm -hmm. right now, Alex, who's currently sitting in his home in a global pandemic just be like, yo, just keep bringing the work to me, baby. I'll just chill out at home. I'm good. And then I'll stream and I'm, and I'm, I'm happy. So that, that I'm playing it safe, honestly, because you, you, you can't just go full, full head onto it or else you're, you're really going to burn some bridges and you got to be careful. It's nice that usually I'm the esports baby in any kind of conversations like this uh, with all the wealth of experience that you all have. But as it pertains to tenure at CSA, at least I'm not the newest. So that makes me feel very good. So shout out me? to Pucket and to Pansy as well. Uh, I don't know. Am I the oldest one? That? Was it? No, you did. Oh, uh, by like miles. Yes. Yeah. What are you okay. at? Like 20 years now? I don't 20, know. 20 years with CSA. <laughs> there you go. Andrew and Kurt have been doing shout this for way to too Andrew long. Andrew and Kurt. I don't yeah. Anyway. Uh, but, but so Pucket, like, what about like that? It's it's a fascinating topic for me, honestly, because these jobs will come up. It's it, to yeah. me, it's almost a foregone conclusion that we're gonna see these kind of jobs come up, and I wonder if those are gonna be the most coveted or the most lucrative positions that will become available. League is so established at this point, right? And when you see these new positions open up, whether it's the old guard or whether it's people clawing and and scratching. Uh, from the amateur scene, like I feel like there's going to be a wealth of people gunning for them. Yeah, I honestly think that the new dream job in esports is the streamer content creator. I don't think it's the commentator anymore. It used to be that way, especially early 2000s, even early 2010s. I thought that the commentators got all the love. I think if I was 20 years old and I was hitting the reset button, no marriage, uh, no other distractions, it was purely me face down Ooh. into the work. Yeah, poor, poor choice of words here on ESPN. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Molly, I love you. You're the best. Not a distraction. You are the uh, focal point of my life every day. Sure, sure, um, sure. Yeah, all right, so <laughs> back to this. I would I would be the guy who is doing live watching sessions uh, with the rest of the community, tuning into the matches. Um, I would be the one making the highlight videos, making all the content, and then also streaming before and after matches. I think that's where I would spend most of my time if I truly love Valorant more than the teams or the player storylines that are in that eSport. Yeah. Um, it, it is exciting times that... You know, this is this is definitely going to be a position that anyone could have in the future. I think any of us casters, though, we've been around for a decade, right? We know that all games are going to have their peaks. They're going to have their valleys. There's always a lot of excitement at the forefront, but that's also where you're going to run into the most competition. So if you want to go full force into Valorant, just be ready to go to battle every day. Be prepared to do a lot of volunteer work. Be prepared to... Um, be making side content and not getting paid at first because i think there's going to be a lot of competition a lot of people taking lower rates that you might not be able to live on uh in the first year or two but for me arda you ask like what everyone wants to do how much of their plate yeah valorant is the game i'm playing most when i was working on the overwatch league that was the game that just had me glued um for the first two years i was on it every single night valorant has me that way right now on top of that we're doing a lot of uh, Warzone tournaments, a lot of different battle royales, and those are fresh and fun every single time. And a lot of them have been for charity. So I think like Golden Boy mentioned, charity events, those have been kind of our, our favorite ones to work recently. We've really enjoyed the challenge of Valorant, but 
we probably don't have the same amount of time that some other up and coming casters do to purely focus on one title. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's let's give some advice to those up and coming casters then. This is a wealth of knowledge here, right? And all three of you would not seem out of place on any esports broadcast. There are a lot of people watching right now that might be aspiring Valorant casters that want to give this a shot, that want to grind, that want to put themselves in the best possible position to be ready to at least apply for these jobs or to try and try their hand doing commentary on an upcoming tournament in the next upcoming months. So Pansy, starting with you, someone's watching, they want advice. What, what would you give them? Uh, outgrind the next person, right? Like, uh, make your own content. Right now, there's no demo function, which is unfortunate. I hope that does come through pretty soon. Um, mute uh, a VOD that's already been up on YouTube, cast over it, watch it back. If you don't like your own voice, if you don't like your own style, work on it, change it, try and learn from the people already doing it. Um, a, a big thing for Valorant, I really want to highlight for casters who haven't come from Counter-Strike especially, um, is understand the value of the round and try and tune your excitement to that. Yes, watching someone get a five-man kill is always exciting, but is it against a pistol round? Is it against, you know, a fully balled up team? Do they have armor? Was that just kind of a set piece that they run? Kind of understand the value of the round that you're, you know, framing there. It, it makes a big difference. Um, also, keep keep an eye on when you're working for free and when you're just undercutting for the sake of getting on the broadcast uh work out your own value i know it's hard to do that in a space like this because people aren't necessarily up front with you know what to make or you know how much i should charge for this but you should be charging something whether it be a small amount unless it's just you doing it off your own back if you're doing an official broadcast get something out of it speak to an agent reach out to a commentator someone will probably help you i mean again it's hard because most people don't want to help out the competition technically and i don't blame them but yeah just just work on it i mean as said you you've got to be your own biggest critic as well if you're not making your own content by this point and reviewing your own commentating working on expanding your vocab trying to work on your tone how you want to present yourself are you analytical are you play by play look up to one commentator and learn how they've made a, a, a slice for themselves in the market i always enjoyed listening to tosspot stuart saw i thought he was phenomenal in what he did i basically copied him for the first two years of me mm. casting when you know the scene there, there wasn't a professional scene at the time so it was all me just at home with winamp just doing it for the 10 friends that would tune in and listen um but again get get ready for a grind it's it's not easy and people aren't always your friends as well you know this is a competition yeah. this is this is it's going to be hard work and you've got to be willing to to kind of graft harder than anyone else as said you know there's big names in this it's a big title um but there is room there is room for these kind of you know grassroots commentators to find a niche in the market and represent the community i think that's the big thing find that place in the community where you can be the voice for them but you know you know polish it up tune it up make it broadcast friendly make it exciting for your average viewer you know try and transition that and you'll find a space for yourself so there's yeah. definitely room out there but you've got to work super 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 hard on the friends point you know we seem like we get along on this stream but we actually hate each other brutal enemies yeah, yeah like yeah. like yeah arda I'm hates cornflakes it's a big problem <laughs> we we have don't yeah. even get st that's a whole other hour that's a whole stream. espn esports stream about me. me and you and and cornflakes but oh we'll save word. that for another that's time after Poppy. dark boys exactly. after, after, after dark after dark after one dark thing, actually one thing pansy mentioned uh which is really interesting is like managing your excitement during a stream so pocket golden boy you guys did the t1 stream right and that was like what like eight hours nine hours of constant streaming right and yeah. you had to manage well, first of all, you had to like pace yourselves because like, it was a marathon, right? So like in those moments, how do you manage the excitement levels but staying true to the integrity of the moments? Mm. Caffeine and a pen and paper. Because <laughs> uh, honestly, I think the, the first thing that starts to go for me is details and just the memory. It all starts to blur together. So having that pen and paper and constantly taking notes of who is playing which agents throughout the tournament, um, how have things switched up, trying to follow the deeper storylines than just the kill feed. I think that was the, the big challenge for me throughout that event. But we're, we're veterans. We've been put through the grinder of 12-hour sessions. I feel like for anyone who's a, a newcomer and just used to doing one match at a time, this will be one of the first real tests of you if you're able to do a full-day broadcast. And I strongly suggest doing it with someone you enjoy their company of. 
That way, even at the worst parts, you can just dive into a few jokes together, just do a yeah. little things a little bit off that switches up the flow and the pace of the show. Yeah, it's a shame that Pansy has to cast for Richard Sims, but you know it is. It's it's uh, tragic. It's brutal. <laughs> it's brutal. It's genuinely. <laughs> it's honestly the worst part you, of Sims. my job. <laughs> I love that man to death. Uh, you know that's Pansy... what she's paid for, not the work. To fact yeah. that she has to work with Richard. She has yep. to deal with Sims. Someone had to, you know. Funded by ex Halo casters, they just pulled together and said, "Look, take him away from us. We'll pay you a good salary." I was like, "All right, well, it's a lot of money, so here I go. That's it." Got to do it. You got to do what you got to do. You know, I totally get it. Uh, Pansy did have an excellent point though about the content and I do want to to stress that point and there was also something else brought up about well, what Puckett said about the uh, companion streams right uh, if he went back and did it again he'd, he'll do something like that and I actually agree wholeheartedly with it if you look at like Avast right it's a really good example of someone in the Overwatch League community that did just a stupendous job of cornering this audience right with his own ridiculous sense of humor uh but at the same time also providing like some good insight and great conversations uh around the games that are going on sideshow also does it uh as well uh in rocket league lawler does it you know and, it, and it's great there as well um you want to have that kind of, and like don't be afraid to do that right obviously like be respectful of the of the content as it exists like if you can get permission to restream the content or whatever reason right you know, go for it, be respectful, obviously. Uh, if you can't, like, find different ways on, on how to, like, create said content, but don't be afraid because your voice is going to bring a different perspective to the conversation that may not have been present beforehand. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, my boy Reflections. He does a show called Reflections on Esports. Uh, it's, it's his own podcast. It's great. It's awesome. It's his own perspective, right? He's been at this for a really long time. I used to cast with him back in UMG Call of Duty days, and He's been at this for a long time. That's a great product to like check out, right? Hit something that he's working on on his own. Don't be afraid to put your voice out there. Uh, and 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 if it, whether it's in a podcast or whether it's you know making videos or I discovered through Valorant on on Reddit. I swear I don't have a Reddit account, but I was on Reddit and uh, I saw these guys, the Clickheads. Uh, you didn't hear that wrong, Clickheads. All right, uh, they make phenomenal videos i mean these guys are unreal with the content that they put out there to the point straightforward they're not esports people per se but they're 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 gamers with a with a clear cut perspective on competitive valorant and just valorant as a game and they make some awesome content and i watch every single video that they produce so there's room there's room for you to be able to do some really kick-ass stuff don't be afraid put your voice out there there, that's the worst thing that you could possibly do. If you're going to wait for the perfect microphone or the perfect camera or the lighting or all that other crap, like you're just setting yourself back. Do, do it now. Don't be afraid. Make the content. That's how you get yourself out there. And put it on social media. I learned that lesson just trying to grind a YouTube channel. It doesn't work just posting videos. Make sure that you guys are being smart with your marketing and how you are getting that word out. Um, yeah. If you're putting all the time in, effort into creating the craft make sure it gets out to the right spots simple example to puckett's point look at simo simo took clips from people's social media and put his own voice on it and one of those clips got distributed around and all of a sudden we found it and then suddenly he was casting our espn esports valorant invitational i mean that things like that i mean if you have any platform whatsoever you should absolutely be using it like the fact that you wouldn't even think to use it is silly. Yeah. Use and my it to only your advantage. And my only advice to Simo, because he's actually a great example of all this, is just again, like know your worth. Know what you know what you're doing. Make sure you put yourself in a good position so that you can succeed down the line. That goes for every single up and coming caster that's out there because everyone will pay you in exposure because you know that's just like a great phrase to say. But you got to recognize if you're putting in an eight hour day, you got to get some cash for that. You got you to get some food for that. You know, you got to be able to provide for yourself. So it's about recognizing your value. Uh, and I think guys like him are just a great example of the, the talent that we can see potentially come up. I'm looking forward to the net, to the first retired player that, you know, right. comes off of Valorant and starts to get into <laughs> the uh, content side and the esports side. That's going to be exciting. There's just there's a ton of opportunity, truly uh that is out there it, it's it's it is the wild west right now but it, it need you guys got to be careful that's it you just just don't get taken advantage of 
Real it's quick. Be, yeah, yeah. Who is the first pro player to retire and become a commentator? Because I, I will say that I will the... sit next to Jordan Nothing <laughs> Gilbert tomorrow. I am prepared, Jordan. <laughs> the one person that's like, yeah, I was in the closed beta, but I'm retired now and I'm going to be an analyst. <laughs> I'd party with that who man. is the first person though i actually do do want to know i don't know could po- we don't even have enough team signed yeah yet to that's be true yeah, that's like, true. yeah. yeah. we don't even have half the major orgs in valorant yet <laughs> we're already talking about analysts <laughs> uh what about the game itself let's go talk about what we like and what we would like to see changed from the game uh we've all had time to play it extensively uh pocket start with you what, what what do you like about valorant what would you like to see changed in valorant Ooh, uh, I love the gameplay. I love the economy. I love the drama and the overtime system works out pretty well so far. Um, the offense defense side of things of overtime is really interesting to me. And I would love to see if there's a solution that people would want to revisit for that round 25 of who gets offense, who gets defense. Are you switching sides more often? Um, I, I think in general, it was awesome to see it improving with every single patch with every week going by i felt like i was learning a little bit deeper about the game the small issues were being tweaked armor penetration uh just the the strengths of the weapons i was understanding them more and towards the end people were flying around the map on race and i feel like that's one of the coolest things is we still don't know how these agents are going to be used in six months or what is the the best way to play these these folks i think the number one thing that i'm looking forward to change though is the ui and the spectator hud that's clearly not something that was a priority in the betas and for good reason it was bare bones enough to get a good production out you can still follow crazy grenades and and shock arrows at times but there's going to be more and there's going to be way more layers to put on to the production side of things so i think that's where i'm most excited is to see once this game is released and once more agents and some new maps are out how can they triple down and uh, and really put the focus on giving the best spectator experience on what is already a very exciting game to watch yeah sorry there's a giant moth in my room so i'm currently terrified get just, that just thing up. Dude, half I'm, of half huge. of chat pansy is commenting on your setup like you yeah. have well, right you now there's a gigantic moth very flying mystical. around okay, there's so. a moth you got uh, the scent the aroma uh, thing going yep, behind the, you the train spotting maybe that's poster what is- is attracted to i don't the, know the, but the right now i'm scared to play though and 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 here's the thing about moths get a sword trust me if you want to have a sword like any like kind of weapon, samurai sword anything like just, ah. a blade, oh, i don't know where it's gone a machete something <laughs> a machete. anything a Baseball dagger, bat a with spikes kunai. In. bro i'm yeah, so ba- paranoid right now it's huge dude, like you could see it on alone. the webcam i'm i'm scared the moth is Turn off all the for, lights. for launch day what can we say <laughs> moth is here for valorant <laughs> The moth is probably a, a filthy jet main. Uh, I did, <laughs> I did want to Phoenix, say Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix. It, it just charged and blunt. It has been brought up quite a bit uh, that the 1.0 patch notes are out. I'm trying to read them. Yeah, yeah. I, I and see them uh, here. one of the things that I wanted was more changes to split, and it seems like we're actually getting some more changes to split. I don't know exactly the. Uh, it seems like they've made some adjustments. Oh, actually, it's a pretty huge one. Uh, the like green corner on mid. Uh, for split actually has been removed completely. And now there's nice. a metal box there and that scaffolding has evidently been taken down. So it seems like they're making good progress on the construction of split. So way to go. Honestly, good job for the contractors during all this craziness right now. Uh, registration <laughs> improved. Yeah. But I, I think that uh, for me, it was also about making characters like jet, you know, we kind of joke around or I joke around about it. My buddy Maz, he's like a filthy jet main. And I make fun of him all the time about it. Uh, and, and it's because, you know, Jet was like such a selfish, uh, character in, in theory, you know, uh, you can get really nasty with Jet, especially with how you can curve those smokes, Mm -hmm. but there really wasn't much value beyond like a four second window that you had with those smokes. And it seems like that's something they, they addressed where they made the smoke seven seconds now. So I am now curious to see how, uh, Jet actually plays into all this because also now Tailwind break ciphers trap wires after being briefly revealed so you can also trap wire i mean sorry you can tailwind out you just burst out of there now which is kind of sick too so they're they're giving her some like entry abilities like i I like what i'm seeing there and i want more of those balances i love the i love the communication i mean take me through the communication between developers in history like isn't this a great 
I mean, I, I was even talking here. Here's a perfect example, Pansy. I was talking with Dignitas Female when, when they made the announcement that they're also going to compete in Valorant. And one thing they said was the communication, at least in the closed beta, between uh, the Valorant developers and the community was so good that Valve started to notice and we're starting to see that a little bit in Counter-Strike. Uh, yeah, it's a positive knock-on effect. I mean, um, if you've come from something like a CSGO game or I guess any Valve title, you know, TF2 out there, or where, where have you kind of hailed from? Um, FPS scene isn't really known for having good communication between the highest end or even the general player base and the developers. There's always been a massive disconnect in regard to that. Um, it does seem, I think Hiko said, uh, uh, he got a clip saying something you know, similar to this um that you know we, we've not had that line of direct communication and then kind of you know the talk back as well and the feedback and them taking it seriously um it's good it is really good i mean i do hope though that they aren't scared to keep going with the ideas they have as well i'm i, I get worried when i see split being adjusted the initial split i don't uh, the initial change they made kind of like prior to the big patches was okay i i'm just i don't want them to water it down to make it too easy i actually like split i like it being a certain sided map. I don't mind, you know, CT sided maps. I like nuking Counter Strike. I think it's a challenge. I think it's a different look. I think you have to approach it from a different mentality. You know, as, as said, it's it's meant to punish rotations. You're meant to split the defense. You know what I mean? Like take mid control and work off the back of it. Um, I hope they don't stray too far away and water it down. Again, it's way too early to tell if that's ever going to mm. be a factor. Um, there's, it's. There's a fine balance, right? It's like you've got to listen to your community, you've got to listen to the high end, but then do you balance for the high end or do you balance for the kind of um, average player? It's it's going to be fine tuning down the line that I'm interested at and how they communicate that to the audience. I think they have a better communication line than most other developers right now. I mean, I, I've never really worked hands on with Activision, but... I don't think they're as forthcoming as, as this has been. I don't think they're as uh, quick to respond. I don't think, you know, I've worked with PUBG. They're definitely not. They say one thing, you hear it from one, you know, camp of, you know, PUBG, and then they do something completely different. So yeah, so far, so good. I am I hope they don't stray too far away from their ideas and, you know, making it a challenge for the audience. I don't want them to water it down too far. It's meant to be a challenge. It's meant to be harder. Like for me, I want the economy to be slightly more punishing. I want to see people be slightly more creative mm. with those pistol rounds because they, they're, they're, they're incredibly viable. I mean, have you seen the Frenzy, the Sheriff? These things are yeah. incredibly useful and you have the utility of the abilities to supplement that. So I don't want it too yeah. watered down. I'd like to see the economy still being a big factor in this because, yes, it's MR12. So it is obviously a shorter amount of time. But when they are on that pistol, when they are being punished for making mistakes, they've got to try and come up with an idea of how to kind of negate that issue. So again, I do hope that it stays that that slightly harder game, not quite to the degree of Counter Strike, but you know, somewhere somewhere between it. I don't want it to be too watered down. Can I just say one more thing from the patch notes here? Sage's barrier orb segment health reduced from one thousand to eight hundred. Duration reduced forty to thirty. Hallelujah. <laughs> No! You know, no! I, Are you I, kidding I, me? I was stuck with the unfortunate task of always being a sage player. Uh, even though toward the end I've made I made peace with my with my existence. Uh, so this actually this actually is going to make it a little bit more challenging for for sage, but it's it's also like kind of important. So I was expecting it. Barrier orb was way too strong. The wall was too strong. It was just it needed it needed to be handled and i i do think that that was actually a uh, a pretty smart change but it's gonna make me hate tank playing sage even more now so. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh let's let's end on this uh we got a few minutes left you guys have been very gracious with your time here uh let's talk about the pro scene let's talk about some of the pros that you guys uh, that you all have casted teams that we have seen orgs that have come into the fray early or uh, whatever strategy they've taken picking up pros from different leagues or picking up five stacks that are relatively unknown? Like which orgs and pros have impressed you? Pucky, let's start with you. Um, I was totally caught off guard with the announcement of the Gen G lineup. And that was the team that went on to win the $25,000 T1 Invitational. Um, I thought that that whole squad had a ton of talent. Clearly they have deep CSGO roots and they're going to be strong contenders when it comes to the flick. But they were just thinking about the mechanics differently. Like player one, playing on the Haven C bomb site, 
trying to retake, jumps on top of a box and fires off a perfect headshot as the last man alive. They're just doing things in movement-wise that were catching players off guard, and that has me really excited. But I think also to layer on top of that, I was very familiar with AZK, with Hiko, with Brax, with all the T1 guys, um, with everybody that became the TSM team. But some of these new faces, I'm really pumped to see breaking out in this new title. And I think the players that are famous right now today, a lot of them will still be around in six months, but we will have a whole new layer of players to be commentating in these tournaments. So that's what has me most excited. Brax, though, is the one guy I want to give a shout out for. I've been playing his same role where you are just the entry fragger. You're thrown out there with no support and you're expected to flick. I think it's the most challenging role in the game today. He is one of the most exciting players to watch. And if I can ever play at his level, I have achieved my goal in Valorant. P Pansy, we know Brax's history with CSGO. Is this a new life for him in Valorant? Uh, you got to hope so, right? It's. It, I think everyone by now in the CS scene, you know, wanted to see him back. But, you know, as said, we have no communication with Valve and they don't seem to care what the community thinks sometimes in regards to that. Um, and that's fair enough. But, yeah, I think it's an exciting prospect to see what he can achieve now that he's been kind of, you know, let off the leash as such. And it's it's time for him to come good on the prospect of him being that tier one player that you could be. It's a lot of pressure for a young man. I mean, it's... As much as, yes, he is incredibly talented, the mental state he's going to be in, I mean, he's come in and he's going to have to now perform with everyone watching him. Everyone knowing that he's, you know, this is his second shot at it. He's got to win it out now. I mean, that's that's more pressure than most people are, are going to be put under to perform in this. So I hope for him he's, he's he's ready to take on that challenge. But it's it's very exciting as a commentator to see him back in the, in the fold. Who are some other teams that you have your eye on? Um, for me, EU-wise, uh, Fish123, obviously, um, mm. super easy to kind of go to them. They're probably the team that, I don't know why there's no Orcs picking them up yet. It's ridiculous. I, I hope it's because they're actually trying to get their value out of a contract rather than just there being no interest. Um, I like the uh, 2 for gl guys. It's a Finnish team made up with very old COD4 promo players who played in a couple of other games after that, but never found their game. So this could be a very fun one. They've certainly come up head-to-head uh, -head with the Fish123 roster and, and done pretty well, not picked up too many wins against them, but they've been competitive. Um, and in NA, I, I, obviously it's easy to go for you know, your Gen G, your T1. I want to see High Grounds do well. They're a PUBG team. They're hungry. And, you know, a lot of the CS old guard are definitely counting out PUBG players and, you know, other game players coming in. You know, I think they're starting to work out, okay, Overwatch players have some ability there. But some of the other game players don't quite get that same level of, okay, these guys are a threat. So I want to see the High Grounds guys do well as well. Nice. Alex, what about for you? Uh... Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to see what comes out of the Asian region, uh, especially when you got teams like Detonator and Norrengo. Like, these are, uh, Norrengo's got a, a pretty solid Rainbow Six squad. And I think that they are going to be like, you know, I, I, I think it's just a region that in, in a game like this, we've seen, we've got glimpses of, but then with uh, PUBG and with Overwatch, like, kind of, you know, blowing up, especially. I remember the narrative was like, ah, you know, in the Asian region, they don't, they don't care about shooters. They're, they're playing, you know, MOBAs and stuff. Uh, and then that was just proven, like, not to be true at all, uh, evidence of the Overwatch League. So I am excited to see what happens there. Like, does this Pine, for example, decide that he wants to compete in Valorant? I would love to see that. He could be filthy, you know? Um, as far as teams that are, are out there right now, uh, yeah, it's, it, there, there are quite a few that have me excited. I think that... Sentinels got to mention them purely because like, we don't really know what we're going to get out of this roster. Uh, it's, it's been a bit up and down uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll see. Right. But Sinatra coming from overwatch, it's, it's just such an easy storyline to follow uh, that, you know, you kind of, you can't ignore it. Uh, furthermore, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what like immortals ends up doing. You know, uh, they're they're trying to field a, a high high quality team. Do they do they have the, the the tools to be able to put together there to for for something really exciting? So yeah, so you know, kind of hard for me to 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 point out, uh, but I do want to give also another shout out uh, to to Force as well, another Rainbow mm -hmm. Six team uh, that is you know here looking to. Well, I know them mostly from Rainbow Six. Uh, I think they might have a Counter Strike team, not too sure, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do as well. So what's interesting is that we have already a very global presence here and i know that first valorant global competition is going to be fire like legit the most dope tournament you could possibly imagine when you get teams competing from all around the world it's gonna be so good 
I can't wait. My so body's good. ready. My heart's ready. <laughs> I don't know if my heart will make it because I'm old, but it's going to be tight. Let's do this. <laughs> You're not even the oldest person in this room right now. Well, you know, I've been married for 10 years, so I That's feel like true. I'm 50, okay? Fair so enough. Fair enough. That's here. a good point. That is, don't pull do a bucket. Say nice things. Yeah, <laughs> don't pull a bucket. We chat, love by the our way, wives. Was, our chat wives was, are the uh, best. <laughs> chat was like, oh, bucket better be careful. Bucket better be careful. Anyway. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Is that a Metallica shirt, by the way, Pansy? Am I just seeing that for the yes, first time? Is. I'm sorry. Oh, it that's amazing. That's outstanding. I love it. <laughs> Well, we I rode the lightning for the last hour. Uh, it was great. It was excellent. Yeah, people commented on your plant, by the way, Puckett. They loved it. Thanks. You're Thanks, between man. one fern. Good for you. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> no one commented on Master Chief, bro. Come on, man. Halo 2020. Let's go. We're looking Please. at the it's purple cube. Halo 12 hour live stream, Golden Boy. Okay. Silence, swine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we go, uh, what's coming up for all of you? Possibly tomorrow. Who knows? Just let us know what's coming up on your plates uh, in the near future and where to find you all. Uh, P Pansy, starting with you. Um, there might be some Valorant coming up soon. Um, we'll see. Can't say obviously too much uh, until things get announced, but some exciting things coming up for Valorant. Still doing PUBG stuff. And obviously um, I'm on the Do Not Peak podcast as well, which is um, Valoranting is the version that they're running, nice. which is Moses who's hosting it. And I get to come on and kind of be a guest and grill whoever dares to come on. We've had some really nice guests and it's been really good fun. So yeah, that's kind of on the plate for now and it's been super good. And um, yeah, before I go and find this moth, I want to say thank you, obviously, to the, the audience, the community who've been super supportive and super fun in Valorant so far. It's kind of been refreshing. I've uh, I've definitely enjoyed it. So that's what's coming up. Well, shout out to Sir Scoots, uh, who also does not like cornflakes, Alex. Old man, Scott. Tired. Strong you know opinions. What? Smart people. <laughs> dude. Pocket, what's on the docket? Uh, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot of more charity work this month. Really excited to keep giving back, doing a lot of uh, Call of Duty Warzone. But the game drops tomorrow. Uh, I'm fixing my sleep schedule tonight. We're taking a little bit of melatonin. We're waking up bright and early at 7.30. We are on stream at 8 a.m. I'm going to try and get Golden Boy in my lobby so he can get can't get carried to a higher rank. I can't even get it out because I know it's not true, Alex. Um, but I was I was dead set on beating Golden Boy's rank by the end of the beta, and I couldn't accomplish my goal. So I'm coming in fresh. I'm training all day tomorrow, and then I'm trying to get Alex to carry me when rank actually comes out. You know, I think I hold the record in our CSA Discord for most asks uh, for an LFG with zero response because you oh, all damn. know that I'm it's, iron and it's you're just like I'm not playing with iron. With you. We, what we want to the game just won't allow us Arda we, we've tried it's, it's, so the it's, it's the game it's the game it's not us it's like we're not responding to this idiot what are you talking about hey, I, watched, I watched Arda clutch a 1v3 there is twitch yeah. evidence of this there is a clip out there that was the one time I played with you in sideshow that's right the one good highlight that I had uh, Alex, uh, obviously we know you're on Titan Games. What else do you got coming up? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can watch Titan Games tonight on NBC uh, at, at 8 o'clock. Uh, so that'll be pretty dope. Um, yeah, I, I, I will be doing a Valorant event. I don't know if it's announced. I don't even know, but I'm casting a thing tomorrow, uh, the Twitch Rivals thing. So that's happening. Uh, so I'll be doing that on Wednesday. And then, uh, and then maybe some of the other stuff. There's some more Valorant tournaments coming up. We'll see what happens there. Uh, also, check out the Four Heads podcast, Great Disaster on the Internet uh and also i stream i stream every day yo i'm i'm like butt crack deep in minecraft right now it's my jam i love it to death uh so that's that's it's like my stream is now valorant and minecraft you couldn't ask for two wider parts of the spectrum uh but here we are uh 2020 nice. what a year uh, what a how, year can i get invite your realm butt crack you... deep like literally oh, okay butt crack right okay. inside just, of it just wanted it's to great. clarify that yeah on espn yeah. thank you just wanted to clarify exactly. that yeah inside. all right no problem, yes, man. Uh, when, when is when is the Arda Knives Only tournament going down? By the way, we got to make that happen. And you're <laughs> yeah. all, the three of you are casting it, and I'm going to give you great exposure. Yes, yeah, oh. dude. Excellent I, so exposure, long as you can pay okay. me in cornflakes, I only will take payment in cornflakes, Arda. Just so you know. <laughs> I Your can't move. afford you three. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, we're going to we're gonna make that happen at some point. Anyway, thank you. Uh, you guys have been very generous with your time, as I mentioned. Please follow them all. Please watch them on their streams and support their work. They are three of the best in the industry, not just Valorant, but esports in general. Very happy to have them here on ESPN Esports. I hope this is not the last time we talk on ESPN Esports, or I hope we find a time to work together at some point in the near future.